going to have years, and, and this is my opinion, everybody's entitled to it, but I think we're going to have years of health issues that are coming. I think there's going to be a lot of instances like what we're seeing in Little Lagoon now where the police are running roughshod over journalists and over citizens. And that needs to be documented. America needs to be outraged by what's happening on the Gulf of Mexico. It's not over. The cap may be on this, but this story has just begun. We've got a long way to go, and we've got a serious story to tell. Um, I don't know any better way at this time than to use the free medias like YouTube, Facebook, MySpace, to communicate the truth back and forth. There's a lot of information out there, and, and you can take or leave whatever you find. Sure. But when you talk to people who are from the communities, and they talk about their sickness, and they talk about their children with the lesions on their body, and their grandchildren with headaches and throwing up and bleeding intestinally. Then there's you know, a lot of credibility in large there. organs. I heard a story today about a and had a large heart, large liver, and, and it was exposed to this in a major way, whether you're working in the middle of it or not. Has this in your blood now, and it will affect some people some more than others because of genetics and other factors. Uh, but uh, you're right, absolutely, that somebody needs to document this. Well, you brought up an interesting thing there. Um, the impacts of this are not just going to be felt on the coast because of the dispersant that was used in that oil. Uh, the hydrocarbons, the oil itself is now part of the water column mixed right. with this other toxic chemical that corrects it. Right. So it will evaporate. It will get into the rain clouds and it will come back down on us. The prevailing winds are taking this stuff across the southeast. People as, as far north as Washington, D.C. are impacted by the Gulf breezes. Mm -hmm. So. In all reality, the entire southeastern section of the United States is potentially in the line of toxic air. Right. Acid rain like we haven't seen since the, you know, before the Clean Air Act. In the 60s. I've seen it. I've seen the smoke columns. Right. I was out there when seven fires were burning at one time. Mm -hmm. And as far as you can see on the horizon, it was black. That has to come down somewhere. When you burn that oil, you condense all of the heavy metals and all the toxins that are in that crude product are condensed into the smoke. And uh, many unexplained crop failures across the southeast this year, and I believe it to be because of the acid rain. My garden produced enough for me, my family, and we gave away more than we kept, and I'm still eating out of that garden today. This year's garden failed in June. Mm. My corn burned up, my beans burned up, everything I had down there. My beans turned to leather. You couldn't eat them. That's interesting. Did you, did it's the same dirt from last year. This map hits that show, you know, like the, like the just massive hits of Alabama's beaches in Florida. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the, this, the people down there never expected. When we were down there for hanging out fest, it still hadn't hit. We are going like, well, we're going to escape the whole thing. And then they got hit, and then they got hit again, and then they got hit again, and just kept getting hit. And they're still getting hit. Ruin those white sand beaches that they like to brag about, that are running big big ass and on Facebook. I don't think that, I don't think that our white sand beaches are going to be white again in our lifetime. I think they're always going to have that pink no, look they're ruined. to them. They're, ruined. they're not natural. Look. They're ruined. And if you go back up, well above the tide line on the beach and you dig a hole down to the water level and you take that water and you have it tested, you're going to find dispersant and hydrocarbon in that water. It's been done in right. Pensacola. That's why the, the uh, companies down there are getting so picky about stopping people from digging on the beaches. They don't want the truth to be told. 
That's why it's critical for citizens to document this. And that's all we really, you know, that's all anybody in the Gulf wants is show us something. Show us the truth, first of all. Don't Tell us the truth. Do not cover this stuff up. And and quit playing toady to BP. It's too late. A lot of people thought we were powerless. The President of the United States, as our Commander-in-Chief, had the power to command our Coast Guard and Navy within the 12-mile barrier of the United States coastal waters. No BP employee, Thad Allen, or anybody else should have the power to stop our Navy and our Coast Guard from protecting our shores. Right. No matter what happened in international waters, these are our waters, and we should have protected them right off the bat. Therefore, I look at this as a tremendous embarrassment, first of all, as a, as a, a Navy veteran. And for somebody that voted for Obama, I'm tired of defending him, too. And I tried to defend him when this thing began. I tried to defend his policy and say that it would be okay, but it's not. It's not okay, because he is just as big a toady to the industry, as far as I'm concerned, as George Bush was. He did not protect our waters when he could have. And to me, that's, you know, that is a betrayal of the trust of the American people who voted for him. You know, that's a great statement. I just, I just listened to Eric Holder today talk about a blight on two previous presidencies. One, Roosevelt, the determinant of the Japanese citizens during World War II is a blight on Roosevelt's legacy and presidency. Uh, let's just say for a second, if we could project what the, histor the historical perspective might look like, is this a serious blight on this guy's presidency? Even if he gets a second term and defeats the Tea Party and gets his health care and does a bunch of other stuff, no matter what else happens to this guy, in office is 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 the response really is bad enough to be considered a blight on his presidency? I or think so. Early to say? You think no, I think so. I think it will be because of just what I said. Right. You know, he had the power, the authority to call our Coast Guard in to deploy boom the way the Navy and the Coast Guard know how to do it. They could have made decisions within our 12 mile, uh, our 12 mile United States waters, that would have turned the tide as far as how much of this stuff actually reached us. Right. I think that if he had been more aggressive in in follow through of his promise to empower the EPA corrects it probably would never have been used in the first place. Right. EPA kowtowed to... EPA uh, wasn't at the table until June the 22nd or something. Well, NALCO makes this stuff. NALCO is a subsidiary of BP. Right. The product itself is a waste byproduct of the oil refining process. Right. It has to be thrown away if they can't find another use for it. It is the, uh, it is the solvent that makes crude oil what it is. When you take this solvent out is where the oil becomes viscous. It becomes more of what you right. find in the plastic container. Right. But if you add it back in there, it'll break down and biodegrade. Sure. So when they take this out, they've got it stored in warehouses. Right. They've got to get rid of it somewhere, somehow. It's illegal everywhere else in the world. So now there's a disaster. Go out there and spray it at night. Yeah, but there's a disaster now in the Gulf of Mexico, and we use it in unprecedented uh, uh, volumes at unprecedented depths and out of the eyes of the American public and out of the eyes of the Environmental Protection right. Agency and out of the eyes of the coast. I just don't think that the, the government took a quick enough stand in asserting itself and saying this is the way it must be, it, not how do you want it to be, BP. Right, right. And that's what we did.